Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Join the Discord. Uh, follow me on GitHub. And if you can, support me on Patreon. I really appreciate that. I put premium problems up there. Um, this is letter combinations of a phone number given a string containing digits from 2 to 9 inclusive. Return all possible letter combinations that the number could represent. Um, a mapping of digits to letters just like telephone buttons is given below. Note that 1 does not map to any letters. Okay. So zero and one we're not dealing with, and the star and the hashtag we're not dealing with. The string only contains numbers from two to nine. So the string might look like 23, or it might look like two, three, whatever. It can only have numbers that are between two and nine, and that's it. Okay. Um, we What we want to do is we want to generate a list of all possible combinations of letters that these numbers could represent. So, for example, in the 23 example, 2 could represent A, B, or C. 3 could represent D, E, or F. So, 23 could represent A, D, A, E, A, F, B, D, B, E, B, F, C, D, C, E, C, F. It could, it could represent any of those. Um, so, that's what we want to generate with the string. And, unluckily, this is... I don't know if you guys are familiar with generating permutations, but this is exactly what that is, and those algorithms are very slow. So unfortunately, this algorithm is going to be really slow. Um, we'll go over the runtime at the end. It's in the solution, and they have an explanation, so I'll show you guys that. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're just going to have a list, and you're going to generate all the permutations, put them in a list, and there's no way around it. That's what you have to do. So let's just create our list really quick. Uh, we're going to do a linked list. We'll call it output array is equal to new linked list. Um, this is going to essentially act as a queue as well, um, which is kind of cool. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll say, okay, if digits.length is equal to zero, we'll just return the output array right away because it'll be empty. There's not going to be permutations if the, it's an empty string that we're given, right? Okay. Um, now, if it's not zero, then we'll continue, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add output array to add this, and this is going to be a string, empty string, and that's just going to help us um, set up with our queue. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're also going to want to have a string array. We'll call it char map is equal to new string array, and this is going to be a mapping of all of the... Um, numbers to characters. So at index 0, we'll put 0. At index 1, we'll put 1. But for index 2, it's going to map to ABC. Uh, index 3 is going to map to DEF. Index 4, and this is so that when we have our index, while we loop through the number, we can access the letters that they represent by their indexes. So when we loop through 2, we know that you know this array of 2 is going to be ABC. When we loop through 3, this array of Three is going to be DEF, right? Okay, so that's just the idea here. Uh, it sucks that you have to type it all out, but whatever. J K L G H I J K L M N O M N O um, P Q R S. In the time complexity is going to be pretty slow for this uh, algorithm. Sorry about this. This is the worst part of my videos when I have to do something like this. TUV, I suck at this. Uh, TUV, uh, WXYZ. Okay. There we go. Um, so hopefully that's fine. What we're going to do now is here's the idea you put things into a queue. Um, we're put, we're going to go, we're going to go through letter by, we're going to go through digit by digit. So first of all, we're going to loop through the digits. I less than digits dot length. I plus plus, and these are numbers, right? These are these are going to act as indices to get to these letters that we want. So we're going to say, okay, int index is equal to digits, or we're going to do um, character dot get numeric value. That's going to give us the uh, integer value of the current character of digits dot char at i. So we get the current digit that we're at as we loop through the string of numbers, and we're going to get the numeric value to get the index to access the letters that we want, right? Um, once we have the letters that we want, that's going to come in handy. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, while output array, this is the only hard part of it, while output array dot peak dot length, so the only thing in output array is this empty string, is equal to i, then we do what we need to do. And that is, we're going to say string 
current permutation, so you could call it permutation or whatever you want to call it, is equal to output array dot remove. So this is like a queue BFS problem. We're putting things onto the uh, queue and we're popping them off. So right now we're saying, okay, if the length is equal to zero, which it is, the string that's in there, the only thing in there, we're going to just pull that out of the queue and we're going to change it because we are now adding characters onto it. We see a new number. We've now found a number and we're going to have to add onto this output array. So all we have to do to do that is for char c in um, the permutations, the, the, the char map of index to char array. So we're looping through the characters that the index represents. So we see we see two, and then we get the index of it. We, so that would be uh, ABC. So the permutation is an empty string right now. We loop through now ABC, and we generate all possible permutations for two, and we add those onto the output array. So like a queue, we go, okay, output array dot add, and then we just do permutation plus C. So we have this current permutation, which is an empty string, and we add onto the output array now, empty string plus A, empty string plus B, empty string plus C. So now the output array has three things when we saw two, A, B, C, and that would be right if the string was just the number two. It would be A, B, C are the possibilities, right? Now it loops around again when it sees three, it gets D, E, F, and it says, okay, is the length of the output array equal to one? Uh, the string in the output array equal to one? Yes, everything's equal to one. And they should all be equal to two because we've seen a two number now. So we pull the permutations off and we, see, we say, okay, um, so for A would be the first permutation we pull off. And we say, okay, is uh, we loop through D, E, F and we do A plus D, A plus E, A plus F. Then we pull B off and then we say, B plus E, D, B plus E, B plus F, and we generate all the permutations. This is the main condition that makes sure that the permutations in the end are coming out to be the same length as the string that we're given as input, you know, because a string of input length two is going to generate all permutations of length two, and it's just a Q kind of thing. That's it. You just do all that, and you, you know, you return your, uh, not the char map, you know, you return the output array at the end, and that's it. You generate all the possible permutations in an array. It's pretty slow. Um, I'll show you the time complexity, and then I'll show you some code that will show you how the time complexity works. So um, here's time complexity. It's O to the 3N times 4M, where uh, N is the number of digits um, in like a three-character mapping, so like A, B, C, D, E, F, and then the... Um, M, four to the M counts for uh, any of them that are mapping to four different characters. So space complexity is the same because we have to, we generate all the permutations, which takes that much time. And then we have to also store them too. So same thing. Um, let me show you this running. I have this code right here that will um, actually show you what's kind of happening behind the scenes. So for the input two, three, we see zero, right? Index zero, I'm printing the index as we loop through the string or the digits string. So as we loop through two, three, we're seeing there's index zero and there's index one. So zero, one, right? So at index zero, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we get the characters for index zero, it's ABC. We, I'm get, we remove the current thing, then we remove the current string, which is an empty string. And then we add, we loop through ABC and we add those on. So we add ABC and then the output array is filled with ABC. Index one, we pop off A, we add A, D, A, E, A, F. We pop off B. This is where you're popping off. So T is representing what you're popping off of the Q. And then T plus S is what's the being popped off added with, you know, whatever your... Um, you know, the threes mapping D, E, F. So it's adding all those, generating all the permutations, adding them. I don't think it's too difficult. It's kind of a basic permutation problem, but um, yeah, and I don't know why the solution says backtracking. I don't, it's more like BFS. I don't really see it as backtracking at all. But um, 
Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I'm wrong about the backtracking. This doesn't look like backtracking to me. It's kind of like a cue kind of thing to me. Um, but um, I thought I explained it decently. But, you know, some people might get confused. So you can reach out to me personally on Discord or uh, Patreon. I usually I answer those like pretty much every time. So, And I'll try to answer the YouTube comments most of the time too. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.